Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. A couple of days ago, I checked out the Ryzen 7 5700U, AMD's kind of re-release of the Ryzen 7 4800U. Well, I'm back today for another deja vu trip as I take a look at the Ryzen 5 5500U. Certainly a lot of fives in that product name. If the 5700U was a CPU equivalent to like an RX 480 to RX 580 re-release, the 5500U is basically an RX 470 to RX 570 re-release. Well, except for one small detail, the Ryzen 5 5500U is an effective re-release of the Ryzen 5 4600U, which was announced in early 2020, a CPU that was seen in zero laptops. Well, not quite zero, but on the rare occasion it did appear, companies like Lenovo felt the need to label it as AMD Ryzen 5 4600U beat i7 1065G7 because no one had ever heard of it. We found it so difficult to obtain a 4600U for testing that we gave up and checked out the Pro equivalent, the Ryzen 5 Pro 4650U instead. The Ryzen 5 5500U is facing no such challenges in the market today. There are loads of laptops available using this chip and it's ended up being quite a popular mainstream buy. At times I've seen laptops available as low as 500 US dollars using this CPU, which is pretty decent value. What is the Ryzen 5 5500U? Well, it's a Zen 2 based processor using AMD's Lucien die, which is very similar to the Renoir die used for AMD's Ryzen 4000 APUs, but it's fundamentally different from the rest of the Ryzen 5000 lineup, which use Zen 3. It's a cut down version of Lucien featuring 6 cores and 12 threads, along with 8 megabytes of L3 cache and 7 Vega GPU compute units. Clock speeds start at 2.1 GHz base and go up to 4 GHz boost on the CPU, as well as 1.8 GHz on the GPU. The major upgrade on the mainstream CPU it's replacing, the Ryzen 5 4500U, is the inclusion of SMT, so we get the full 12 threads instead of 6. There's also now an additional unlocked GPU compute unit. The rest of the design is quite similar, down to TSMC 7 nanometer fabrication and the default TDP of 15 watts. Although AMD tells me that some areas to the APU are improved compared to Ryzen 4000, such as power management for better battery life. For today's testing, I'm using the ASUS VivoBook M15, which I purchased from Newegg for a price tag under 600 US dollars before taxes and shipping. So another great value buy there in my opinion. With that said, I'm not sure if ASUS put the wrong sticker on this laptop because it claims to have a nano edge display, lightweight design and super battery. None of these things are really true at all. The bezel is not particularly slim at 1.9 kilos. It's not lightweight, and I'd hardly call a 37 watt hour battery as a super battery. Asus should have just, you know, not put a sticker on here at all rather than making up some crap marketing. Aside from the laughable sticker though, there's nothing that wrong with the Vivo Book at this price point. It's a classic mainstream 15 inch laptop that focuses more on hardware and functionality than having the best and coolest design. As well as the Ryzen 5 5500U inside, which by the way can easily run at 25 watts with this included cooler, the M15 also packs 16 gigabytes of dual channel DDR4 3200 memory in my unit, as well as a 512 gig SSD and 1080p display. We're testing the 5500U today at both 15 and 25 watt configurations. The idea being that if you're tossing up between the same laptop with different CPU choices or similar sorts of laptops in terms of size and cooling capacity, then these benchmarks with the same long-term power limit will be relevant. Ultra thin 13 inch systems tend more towards the 15 watt end of the scale, while larger systems can give you 25 watts. But of course, when buying, you should do your research into the relevant power configurations of the products you are considering. Getting into the benchmarks now, and I'll start with Cinebench R20. In the multi-thread test, the Ryzen 5 5500U provides performance virtually identical to the Ryzen 5 Pro 4650U, which makes sense as they're basically the same APU design, at least on the CPU side. What this means for buyers though is that the 5500U provides a handy 16% performance improvement on the Ryzen 5 4500U at 25 watts and a 20% uplift at 15 watts. So Nothing to scoff at there for a single generation upgrade to AMD's mainstream SKU. We're also continuing to see a substantial performance lead over Intel's Core i5-1135G7. We're getting 40% more performance in multi-threading in the higher power class and a huge 74% uplift at 15 watts. For single thread performance, the 5500U is rather unimpressive as it's just a Zen 2 processor running at up to 4GHz. 
Performance is only a couple of percent better than the 4500U and it's 11% slower than the Core i5-1135G7. AMD's choice of single core clock speed is hurting them here. The 1135G7 boosts up to 4.2GHz compared to 4GHz on the 5500U. If those clocks were the same, the 5500U would be getting a lot closer to matching Intel's Tiger Lake. In Handbrake and other long-term multi-thread benchmarks, the 5500U is a strong performer for just a Ryzen 5 part. Performance is slightly ahead of the 4650U and nearly getting to the level of the 8-core 4700U. This allows for up to 19% more performance than the 4500U and at least 40% more performance than the 1135G7. In Chromium code compilation, we see another large jump in performance going from the 4500U without SMT to the 5500U that does have SMT. Performance is 21% higher at 25 watts and 23% higher at 15 watts, so there's plenty of reason to opt for the newer Ryzen 5000 design. Like in other multi-core workloads, the Core i5-1135G7 is no match for the 5500U as quad-core designs simply aren't sufficient. In MATLAB, the 5500U is not a strong performer like many of its Zen 2 cousins. The 5500U ends up a bit slower than the 4650U, and that's not enough to match even the Ice Lake i7-1065G7 from the previous generation. Performance is at least 8% behind the Core i5-1135G7, a drawback to using the older Zen 2 architecture. In our Microsoft Excel benchmark, the Ryzen 5 5500U is able to outperform the Core i5-1135G7. The Core i5 model from Intel has cut down cache compared to the Core i7s, giving the 5500U a pure core count advantage. This leads to similar performance in the higher power class, but up to an 18% lead at 15 watts, where the 5500U is clearly the more efficient processor. In the PC Mark 10 Essentials test, there is nothing separating the 5500U and 1135G7, which is good news for people interested in a mainstream laptop. App loading, web browsing, basic tasks are going to be quite similar between these devices, due to a balance of multi-threading, single-threading, and cache that doesn't really favor one processor over another in this test. However, in the applications test, the 5500U is about 7% slower than the 1135G7, which more closely matches the difference in single-thread performance we saw earlier. In 7-zip compression, once again, we see the 5500U and 4650U offering very similar performance from their similar CPU designs. This allows the 5500U to provide at least a 19% performance boost over the 4500U at 25 watts, and slightly more at 15 watts. It also means the performance is ahead of the Core i5-1135G7 to the tune of 8% in the higher power class. Decompression is extremely strong on the 5500U due to the addition of SMT. With double the thread count of the 4500U, performance is over 50% higher as this particular benchmark really likes AMD's SMT implementation. The lead on the 1135G7 as a result is huge at 65%. In Adobe Acrobat PDF exporting, the 5500U is hampered by its low single-thread performance relative to more modern CPU architectures. The 5500U isn't any faster than the 4500U as boost clocks are basically the same, and this allows the 1135G7 to take a huge 21% performance lead. Any really heavily single-threaded applications will be similar. Adobe Photoshop is an interesting case. With higher-end Tiger Lake processors, the big clock speed and cache advantage that Intel has on top of their higher IPC relative to Zen 2 means that a chip like the 1165G7 trounces the Ryzen 7 5700U. But that's not the case comparing the 5500U to the 1135G7. While the Intel CPU is still ahead, the 5500U is just 3-4% behind, which is somewhat negligible, and means that either mainstream APU option is going to deliver okay results for Photoshop. Then for Adobe Premiere, you're probably not going to want to use a Ryzen 5 5500U laptop for video editing, unless it's also paired with a decent discrete GPU. Apps like this get pretty bottlenecked by the iGPU and at times can struggle, so higher end machines with better graphics capabilities are a must for the best performance. Looking at a performance summary, it's no surprise to see the Ryzen 5 5500U delivering basically the same performance as the Ryzen 5 Pro 4650U, aka Ryzen 5 4600U, with most productivity benchmarks being within a couple of percent. The outliers here are largely graphics workloads, where the additional compute unit does lead to higher performance, especially at 25 watts. 
The good news for mainstream laptop buyers comes in the comparison between the 5500U and the 4500U it's replacing. While single-thread performance hasn't really improved at all, multi-thread performance can be over 20% faster thanks to this upgrade, which essentially takes the 4500U and adds SMT. This is without any change to the power levels or TDP. However, there's still plenty of reason to buy the Ryzen 7 5700U. With the 5600U largely being absent in the market, the 5700U ends up being the effective next step up, and with it comes a boost to both single and multi-thread performance. As you can see here, the 5500U is almost always slower, and multi-thread workloads can be up to 19% slower, depending on the power configuration. Comparing the 5500U to the most similar Intel processor, the Cry 5 1135G7, reveals what we have known for a while now when comparing Tiger Lake to Zen 2 mobile APUs. The 5500U is massively faster for multi-thread workloads, with the addition of two extra processing cores and improved efficiency delivering big gains. However, the 1135G7 is faster for single-threaded tests. It's not as fast relative to Ryzen as higher-tier Tiger Lake processors, but the advantage is still there. The 1135G7 is also faster than Ryzen for iGPU performance and gaming, if that matters to you. A couple of quick iGPU gaming tests to round this one out. Here is a look at CSGO, which shows the 5500U with its extra compute unit and higher clock speeds, delivering around 5% more performance at 15 watts. Despite big jumps in performance on paper, in a lot of games at 15 watts were actually power constrained rather than GPU constrained. In F1 2019, you'll spot a larger 9% performance improvement going from the 4650U with 6 compute units to 5500U with 7 compute units. Performance isn't too bad for games like this that are running on the lower settings, especially if you're willing to reduce the render resolution below native. Then we have Rainbow Six Siege, where again we see a 6% performance improvement going from the 4650U to 5500U, which sits slightly below other Ryzen APUs. So there you have it, the Ryzen 5 5500U benchmarks. While this is a refreshed processor that performs very similarly to a chip from AMD's Ryzen 4000 lineup, what we're getting this generation is more on the availability side than anything else. It was virtually impossible to find a 4600U last year, while this year 5500Us seem like they are in abundant supply, which is a good thing for the mainstream laptop market. That's because the 5500U is an upgrade on the Ryzen 5 4500U it's replacing. It's not always significantly faster, especially for single-thread workloads, but the addition of SMT and faster graphics makes it a better choice for buyers. In some instances, you'll see upwards of 20% performance gains, which leads to better efficiency and performance per watt. Now yes, ideally I'd have liked to see this part be a Zen 3 processor so we can enjoy the benefits of the newer architecture and improvements to IPC, but it doesn't seem like AMD is too interested in getting the Ryzen 5 5600U to market in any significant quantities, instead leaving us with either the 5500U or 5700U both using Zen 2. If you really want Zen 3, you have to go up to the 5800U, which at that point is clearly a different processor class. While performance is better than the 4500U and overall decent upgrade, AMD has missed an opportunity here to kind of shut Intel out of the mainstream market from a performance standpoint. The 5500U is a lot faster than the widely used Core i5-1135G7 for multi-core productivity, but trails by a double digit margin in single thread. This can still make the Core i5 a worthy choice depending on what you use your laptop for. If it's more on the basic end of the scale, then the 1135G7's single thread advantage will come in handy. Had AMD used Zen 3 for all of their Ryzen 5000 APUs, including the 5500U, so effectively, if this part was really the 5600U, I suspect it would have been the universally faster chip but it's not, so the Intel option survives, and unfortunately consumers miss out on kind of an all-rounder processor that's fast for everything, but is still quite affordable. The good news though is that AMD appear to be enabling some very low laptop price points with the Ryzen 5 5500U. 500 to 700 US dollars seems quite common for mainstream designs, and I think that's really fair for the performance on offer, especially if you're upgrading from something like a 7th gen Intel laptop. Yeah, you're not getting the absolute latest performance and specs and architectures for the CPU, but it still performs pretty well for a sort of five or $600 laptop. However, Intel Older Lake isn't too far away now, so we'll have to see how that shakes things up. Anyway, that's it for this performance testing of the Ryzen 5 5500U, and I guess that pretty much wraps up our testing of U-series processors for now. Unfortunately, it did take us 
a little bit long to get to these last two ones that we wanted to cover, but yeah, we've, we've done it now. So if you're interested in buying laptops, then hopefully you've got the information that you need. If you're interested in supporting the channel and our laptop testing, we do have Patreon and Floatplan. You can sign up, chat with us in Discord, view some monthly live streams, catch BTS videos and all that good stuff. So consider that and that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.